All right, I'm going to show you how to make the most realistic looking AI generated images of yourself that you've ever seen. This is very easy if you follow these steps. A lot of people don't and they make really weird looking unrealistic images because they don't know what they're doing. So I'm going to clear that up right now. So if you look at this, this is a headshot of me completely AI generated of if I was a personal trainer. Uh, you can use that for LinkedIn or whatever. Um, this is zoomed in a little bit, but you can see the back. I'm in gym clothes. Um, there's like a gym in the background, but this is so realistic looking of me that like, honestly, even my mom wouldn't know that is not a photo of me because I asked her and she thought that it was taken in the summer. So I'm going to show you how to make this type of thing with a lot of variety as well. Um, and then how not to do something like this. This is another AI generated image, which looks like a joke. It's like a painting. And this is from one of those free generators. I'm going to show why those don't work. This is actually Canva, which I love and I'm using right now to record the video. They have a lot of great tools, but you can't do these free ones and expect anything good. Now, I did use another free tool and it got better. I mean, it still puts the this like watermark in the background, but I think you can get rid of that. But the hair's wrong. Um, like I look kind of chubby and wider. And this does not look like me. It's much better than this one, but it's nowhere near as good as this. So the free ones just aren't going to cut it because the models to create these, it's just way too expensive to offer. It costs the company producing these several dollars um, just to make a model of yourself that it can then generate images. But then once you have that model, then you can create a bunch and it's not that much extra. So this is really cool. So you're never going to get it in the free ones. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it the best. But even if you're paying, it's still a lot of them aren't very good. So here's another one. This is me uh, still realistic. It's very different than this in, in a certain sense, but you can clearly tell it's the same person. And this is another photo, like in certain lighting and clothes, this looks like me. This is if I was a Silicon Valley um, investor type of person, angel investor, VC guy. This is what I made there. And I love this. I would use this uh, in a heartbeat on a LinkedIn profile or something like that if I need this type of headshot. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, another one, me is it like in a suit. These are all realistic, like my wife, my mom, they would not know that it's not me. Okay, so the first step you need to do is train a custom model. Now, if you ever see these free ones like Canva that are advertised because people are searching that, it'll say, you know, upload one photo, take three minutes and I'll give you this. It's never going to work. So you need eight to 12 photos of yourself. These don't have to be amazing photos. They can be selfies. Uh, you can use your camera, get just somebody to take a few photos in the living room, but you want different poses, different angles, preferably different lighting so that the model has something to learn from. Like I wouldn't wear my hat in any of the photos, no sunglasses, no beard or something like that, unless you want a beard. So you want to have, you want to look the same how you want to look, but you want it from different angles and different lightings. Don't confuse the model, but you want to give it enough images to train on. So these are six of the images, and this is not a perfect range. I did this quickly, but I still got the good results. Um, so these are just actual photos of me. This is These are just a bunch of me in different poses in the living room. I should have worn different clothes and varied these ones up more, but I was just doing it quickly. But if you do eight to 12 with at least this variety, maybe a little more variety, you'll get even better results. Okay, but they don't have to be amazing. Like this, this whole photo shoot, you know, in the living room took, like two minutes. Um, all right. Now, this is another huge key. You need a good underlying model. So we use Flux 1.1 high resolution. Leonardo, which Canva is using, um, is, is really good for some things, but it's not good for people. That's why that came out so weird. I guess, I don't know if they're worried about getting sued or something, but they don't make good looking humans. They used to, but they don't know. Um, and there's, there's a whole bunch of models in the background that you can use, but like none of them are anywhere near as good for people as Flux 1.1. And also the model parameters, you don't have to worry about this, but you have to make sure you're using a tool that does this well. They need to be tweaked and adjusted 
to be not too creative and not too rigid. So if it's too creative, then you get most of the photos look, don't look like you. They just look like other people. But if it's too rigid, then every single photo will look exactly the same, like you cut it out and change the background. So you want to have it look like you in different situations. So there's a certain bunch of parameters that need to be tweaked. And that's why some of these AI generators are better than others. Um, another tip, okay, when you're prompting, don't overdo it. If you use too many words and the model will get overloaded. So if I say, you know, make a photo of me with my train model, um, and you know, I want to be wearing a purple shirt and this, and I want the background to be like this. And, uh, you know, just like if you have a million things you're asking it to do in one image, then what happens is it'll sort of forget, uh, for lack of a better term, all of these things, you know, it will equally prioritize uh, each of these requests, and then it'll get all of them sort of wrong. So if you ask, if you ask like 10 to 15 different things that you need it to all have be true, then just the photo part of yourself won't look as good. So you can ask it to do some things, but just don't get carried away and ask too many things in the same prompt. And I'm going to put a link because uh, uh, in the video description here, but the, uh, about how to prompt um which is pretty easy you got to use your trigger words and certain things but it's just a little bit too long for this video but you know don't don't overdo it basically that's the tip here and but you do want to be redundant on important things so for example i always mention that i have a shaved head and i'm clean shaven in my photos because even though all of my training photos if you go back here i have the same like haircut so to speak um, and i don't have a beard or mustache it's amazing that uh, these these models will sometimes just put a hairstyle on me or they'll put, you know, different facial hair or whatever. So I I just mention it to sort of double check that it knows like, OK, that's really important. Um, one of our AI influencers, she wears black glasses. And I always mention that in the prompt, like make sure she's wearing the bl black glasses if I want to make sure they're in there. I mean, often they are, but sometimes it sort of forgets and everything else about the photo is good. So you want to mention more than once uh, something that you really need to be true. Um, and then the last thing is to be patient. There's a lot of randomness. It's like rolling dice. So some AI photos will look good. Some won't with the same prompt. So if you do one prompt and you get an image that looks OK, you just wish something was changed. I would do it at least 10 times with the same prompt um, if your first one is close to what you want because the, the randomness, uh, at some point you'll get a photo that looks how you want it. So you can't just use one guess. But like if I go back to this, uh, you know, this one, if I did it 10 times, some of them would look better than others, but I'd be happy with one. But if I got this first, I wouldn't prompt it again because I'd know instantly like this is not at all what I want. But if you get something close, then you can ask it again and then pick the best one from the variety there. So if you look like these all look different, but there's enough variety in how I looked that it's generating an image based on how it would think I would look um, based on my training. And these are really realistic. So we're using Carterio, which we created, which is honestly, it's the best one and you get the most control. You can prompt it a zillion times. It's affordable. It's only $19 a month. And if you don't want to use it, like if you don't need to make that many photos, just you can get rid of it after a month by one click. But uh, it's amazing. So you can make hundreds of these images of yourself. You just have to upload. So these are all uh, AI generated. They all look like me. Um, it's very easy to do. Again, I'm going to put a link to how to prompt on this, but just go to carterio.com. I'll put a link in the description and start your AI generated images and headshots yourself. And you will absolutely love this.